Let's do it. Hey, it's Whitney from EcoVeganGal.com, and I am joined by Kathy Potelsky today. She is my Hi. special guest here on the live Q&A, which happens every Saturday on the EcoVeganGal YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Since I imagine there are some new people watching today, I want to do a quick intro to how these work. So let's start with the people who are watching the recording. One of the best things for you to know is that you can actually skip forward to different times in the video. So you don't have to watch the entire thing. These usually go a little bit over an hour. So I put the links down below in the description field and you can click right there and there's time codes. You can jump right to different time codes so they can go see specific questions that we're talking about. And also in the description field for everyone watching, there are links to all the products we mentioned, books, websites, videos, anything we talk about, we'll put it down below so you can easily check it out if you're interested in learning more. Those usually appear within 48 hours of the recording, just so you know. So for those of you watching live, you have the special benefit of being able to ask live <laughs> questions. And we're so glad that you're and they're here. And they are with us like on a Saturday. Yeah, Yay! it's really cool. Thank you for being here. Saturday party. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the way of the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're very grateful that you're here with us today. Yes. So the way to ask questions is you need to go through Google Plus. I know some of you might be watching on YouTube where you can watch, but you won't be able to ask questions that we can see live. So go over to Google Plus. You can find the link on the Eco Vegan Gal Facebook page and Twitter page. You can find it on the Finding Vegan and Lunchbox oh, Bunch, yeah. Healthy Happy Life okay. site, um, and uh, Twitter accounts. So go find that link that will bring you to the Google Plus page, or you can just look for it at google.com slash plus symbol eco vegan gal, and you click on the link, and then you open up the video. And once you're seeing us on video, on the right-hand side, there's a little section called the Q&A app. It, doesn't, it sounds more complicated than it is. The Google Plus. Just go to Google Plus. Yes. yes. But you have to open it up because there's they yes. allow you to comment in a couple of different places. <laughs> if, if you want to interact with us, mm. it has to be done in what's called the Q&A app, which is a little widget on the side. And you can actually do this on your mobile device or you can do this on your computer. The mobile device, you'll just have to download the Google Hangouts application. Once you get in there, you can interact with us and actually other people. You can plus one other comments and they'll rise to the top so we can uh, you know, read a comment or a question, whatever it is. And you can add those in <laughs> at any point. But what we're gonna do now is start off with some pre-sent in questions. If you look in the description field, you'll see a link to where you can submit questions for the future. And we had a bunch just for for you and some that were submitted in advance that I thought cool. Kathy would be great at answering. Great. So we're going to start off with those. But just send in your questions anytime yes. and we'll see them in probably about 20 to 30 minutes when we're done you with You can ask questions. us anything yes. live right now. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that's, well, if you say anything, like then we're going to get some. Instant access. Well, we don't have to answer that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We still get to screen. Yes, we reserve the right. But uh, most of you are very, very great about asking. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll get some like random person Sending in some <laughs> really interesting questions. You need to make like a little book of that. Yeah, that that's true. I never thought to do that. <laughs> One of my mm. friends and I, Catherine from Rabbit Food for My Bunny Teeth, we have a we want to do a coffee book of all the the mean comments called hashtag rude. <laughs> How come nobody has done that? I mean, we've got Jimmy we'll Kimmel, like, right? Yeah. But nobody's. I yes. wonder if anyone's put a video, um, a book together of them. Nice, funny, brilliant. Because some of them are hilarious. It's they are like. Wow, really? <laughs> and sometimes they need to be hilarious because they hurt so bad, you have to laugh at them yes. to stop the pain. Yes. And then on the other side, you can flip the coffee book over, and then there'll be one with, like, all the nice <gasps> Why did you just tell? Now somebody's going to go make it, and you're going to lose your opportunity. I copyrighted it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of books, you can tell that she's very knowledgeable about the book process. She is an author of... Has your second book come out yet, or just your it first It comes out in April. It's all done. It's I'm gonna January first is when I'm gonna do the main, the big kind of release Ooh, on my blog. So you exciting. guys have the inside date on that. But. We'll show them your current book that's yeah. already out. This is the smoothie book, and it goes well because somebody we can <laughs> jump forward to a question real quick. Kimberly asked, "Can you recommend a smoothie cookbook?" So we have 365 <laughs> yes. smoothies, which is Really cool it's, because 
you have a smoothie for every single day. Right. And they, they're really fun. Like I tried to get really creative names and if you look on the inside, it has really pretty pictures. Yes. <laughs> You're very good at that. So she also has a website. And it's just, I'm really proud of it. This. It's just, they did a beautiful job on the layout and I almost think the inside is more beautiful than the cover. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's honest. actually a, that's a nice thing, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just like a little surprise. Right. So you have your website, Healthy Happy Life, which is also known as the Lunchbox Bunch, right? Yes. Bunch. HealthyHappyLife.com is how I'm trying to just keep it simple it for people now. I, yeah. I finally bought that domain. Excellent. Because I Excellent. didn't have it in the beginning, but yeah. it became available, so. That's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. And you also have Finding Vegan. Do you want to tell them about Finding yes, Vegan? Yes, Finding book? Vegan is awesome for anybody who's looking for vegan recipes and loves vegan blogs because instead of like going to 20 different blogs in a day, you can just kind of go there and see pictures of all I the recipes that. that are coming through. Oh, yeah. And we have um, over 60,000 registered just people who've registered with the site and then we have just you know hundreds of bloggers who submit regularly so it's, it's really great and you can submit too i know <laughs> well i'm not that big into recipes but i've been meaning to submit you could do we're trying to do more videos so like you could put like a thumbnail of your recent video and submit it oh. and then we'd put it under the category video i totally do oh. that and then i'd promote it through the facebook mm. page which has over four hundred and eleven thousand likes it's amazing and, and you've got it's really international, like so cool. very global. So you guys will definitely have to check that out if you're looking for more content and yeah. more recipes, or if you want to submit one of your own. Evie, Evie is being <laughs> very we talkative. Have the app coming out soon, hopefully. That's like, awesome. is that your first app? Or, you know, you I have, have one, a right? smoothies app that's from years ago that's still pretty cool. But <laughs> <laughs> Times are changing. Time, yeah, 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 that type of thing. But <laughs> I do. That's cool. Things. See, she's up to so many things, including what we're just working on oh, right yes. now. So, for those of you who don't know, we just launched this big twelve days of vegan Christmas video series and giveaway. We have twelve videos to help you. Get through your, your well, I shouldn't even say get through, enjoy, enhance your Christmas and holiday experience as a vegan. So we cover everything from all sorts of cool recipes. She's got food recipes and DIY recipes. We have shopping tips and gift ideas and stocking stuffers and all this stuff that's yeah, coming out. Just random stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff and all these different angles of Christmas. Yeah. And we just released the first one today, so you can check it out. It's on my channel. It's lovely. And then who are we doing next? Who's tomorrow? Is it Kobe? Kobe? And then yours and then is mine, on Monday. Yes. Mine's so we're alternating. On Monday. Yes. It's, Each of us, um, all three of us are in. <laughs> a little hint. Is yes. What mine is? <laughs> can you guess? Which, can you guess what you she made them. in this video? Yeah, they're like glowing on screen. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're really, really good. A lot of people don't know about this brand because they're on the smaller side, but they're they make like these mm. marshmallows that taste like handcrafted. And you would never know that they were vegan. No. I mean, they look and feel and taste just like any other marshmallow. They're called Sweet and Sarah. We'll link to them down below, and they'll be featured in the video. And they're part of the giveaway. Mm -hmm. The giveaway oh my gosh. is massive. It's crazy. It is close to or just over $2,700 worth of products. Yeah. And this so. is stuff that, like, as bloggers, you guys know we get tons of free stuff. So we could have very easily been taking all this stuff <laughs> ourselves, ourselves throughout the year. <laughs> but we went to our favorite brands and people who have supported us over the years. And we are like, we want to give this back to our readers. And yeah. a huge, massive thing. Yes. So. And we also, also thought it would be cool if one person got yeah. it. So, like... Because it's, you know, I've there's so many giveaways and they're pretty satisfying. But when you get something massive, yeah. it is just, like... I don't even know how this person's going to react. I, I think I it should be a requirement that they videotape their I know. Reaction. I want to get the full <laughs> reaction. We should, like, do, like, publishers there. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is your address? If they live we'll in L.A., we'll different. go there in person. Or we'll fly there. Put yes. in business expenses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that would be so that cool. That would be really cool. We'll have to do that next year. I think we're going to have to do this every year. Yeah. It's really, really satisfying. We're giving away a Vitamix and Vegan Cuts bought subscriptions uh, for six months 
months and an espresso and an essentia, a pillow, a five hundred dollar vegan dress, <laughs> which is gorgeous. I mean, there's literally over two hundred things plus, or yeah. not two hundred twenty. Twenty. <laughs> I wish next year it'll be two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> we're giving away Kathy's book and my ebook, Healthy Organic Vegan on yeah. a Budget. So somebody's gonna be really lucky. All right. Well, with no further ado, let's jump into the questions. We have a bunch to answer. So let me pull them up. Okay, so Rachel asked, she asked about bread. She says she hates buying it, but has no experience making it. She doesn't want to give it up. She can't believe all of the horrible, detestable, nasty ingredients that make up conventional bread. <laughs> it's honestly one of the foods that grosses her out the most. Chemicals, wow. preservatives, don't get me going, she said. <laughs> the best and few options I have turned to, of course, are the gluten-free freezer breads. I don't uh, have a tiff with them, but coincidentally, they are the cleanest and healthiest. However, she can't stomach spending $6 on a baby loaf of bread. Her conclusion, maybe she should, she should start baking them. Do you have any experience? I do not, but we've got the recipe. I was going to give a cool word, a recipe like... Don't say guru. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say guru. I wanted like some That's really so good obvious. words. But, um, okay, bread. Bread is interesting. Bread is one of those things where I used to kind of say, you know, outsource those types of things to experts because baking is such a fine process, art, artisanal, you know, mm -hmm. the cheese people. Like, yeah. I'm going to buy from Miyoko's Creamery. I'm not going to buy... also in the giveaway. <laughs> giveaway. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> You know, I, I can make my own cashew cheese, and it's really yummy, and it's kind of delicious, but when you really take days to let it, like, age and put in all that work that, honestly, you probably don't have time to do as a normal person, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, outsource it. Bread can be the same thing, but is she talking gluten-free only? I it's hard to tell here. Like I if think you want that, like a classic sourdough of a bakery bread, yeah, there are small bakeries probably in every town that does that type of bread really amazingly. Like I was just having brunch at La Pan Quotidienne, and they have really great spelt bread, yes. and um, you know their baguettes are just amazing, super mm -hmm. light and fluffy, and I can't make that stuff. You know, it would just you could I could take forever I could, but <laughs> yeah. I don't have you know the whole day to make. Or the bread. passion. I feel like if, if you loved bread, like maybe if you right. had that big passion for it, and you can get a bread maker, or you can even make it in your oven. I mean, yeah. there are ways. Of course, it gets more complicated when it's gluten free. It gets much more. Like I made um, a stew two nights ago, and I was like, oh, I need some nice homemade bread with it. So I literally popped some sweet potato biscuits in the oven. I made them in like five minutes, popped them in the oven, and they were super amazing, but they were not gluten free. Okay. It was just like mashed sweet potato flour, um, some vegan butter, and that was really it into the dough. And then you just kind of like put, make the dough, wow. press it out, stick them in the oven, 400 degrees, and they're done in like 20 minutes. Could you swap that out for an all-purpose gluten-free flour, you think? I think you could, but it won't have that same... I think they'll be a little heavier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Well, there is the option of a lot of gluten... Of bread-like products out there, right? So it's really easy to make gluten-free muffins or it's really uh, scones are relatively easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are mixes that you can get too. I mean, there are bread mixes. So if you don't yeah. want to just do everything by scratch, that would be a nice in-between. Right. Because you could get a bread maker or like figure out the oven situation yeah. and just get the mix. But then those get more expensive too. And then you're like, why didn't I just buy it? Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> the time involved. But involved there that. is a lot of great freezer breads too. Yeah. Like, yeah. And Trader, Trader Joe's has um, a gluten-free vegan bread by Food for Life right. that is $4.50. Yeah. And there's like 16, 12 or 16 slices in yeah, there. Trader so. Joe's, the California style sprouted. We, uh, that's not gluten-free. Right. But well, then there's sprouted really breads, too. which if, if you're looking for something that is clean in terms of not having the preservatives, the chemicals, and all that, usually the sprouted breads tend to be really clean, like mm -hmm. Ezekiel, yeah. and you can find those at, at um, Trader Joe's and, and other places. And yeah. Try even Whole Foods. I mean, they have some breads that aren't that insanely expensive. Just do some price comparisons. Yeah. I definitely encourage you to try making it, but again, yeah. I think the time investment and the financial investment usually adds up to be almost the same. Yeah. So I it all depends on... Um, but then there's the situation like the biscuit thing where you literally just pop it in the oven. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it is well, easy. Well, that, if you're not gluten-free, 
If you're not gluten free, yeah, then that's great. It's three, what, three ingredients you said? Yeah. 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 All right. Super I like easy. that. That I wish I could eat that. <laughs> I'll have to try <laughs> making it gluten free. Yes. Okay, so Jessica is looking for some options for oil-free, good quality, gluten-free tortilla chips. What are some brands that we recommend? She doesn't have a natural market close by, so she's hoping for something that might be in her local grocery store or I would say online. Hmm. You know, for me, it depends if you're going with corn tortilla chips mm -hmm. or if you're going with um, – what would traditionally be like the the wheat tortilla chips, but there are gluten free versions of it. I mean, I love um, way better snacks. They yeah, have they they have like corn like tortilla chips, like more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have a pita style. Evie, shh, quiet, honey. She really. I'm gonna have to get up and tend to her in a second. <laughs> but think about if you have another brand. Um, but they're they're pricey. They, but they are easily to find in actually a ton of stores now. They're becoming more and more. I don't know if they're oil free, so the oil free part is tricky. I don't think they are, but they're, yeah, I don't they're think very they very clean. Yeah, I don't know how much oil is in them. If there is, I would say look for a baked corn chip. I know those exist. I know yeah. there's some simple <laughs> options out there. You know what's really delicious is, and they're very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> really good. One Lucky Duck sells these salsa crisps, and they're like oh. raw corn tortillas. Yes. But they're spicy. Yes. In a little bag, it's probably like six dollars, but you don't eat as much then when you yes. spend more money That's on true. them. And, and they're, they're in our giveaway so too. <laughs> good, and they're raw and they're vegan, and you eat them and you feel super healthy eating yes. tortilla chips. A number of but, brands actually. I've I forget who else I've had. Or you could make your own. Yeah, they're you know, not that. If you have hard. a dehydrator. I, w I mean, you can make your own in general. You could actually get you can um, just bake like kind of rice, corn tortillas. yeah, or a corn or rice uh, tortillas, yeah. and you just slice them up yeah. and bake them in the oven. Yeah, absolutely. That would probably be the best way because then you would know exactly what into them. And usually, those are one or two ingredients. And rice tortillas are awesome. Yeah, they, they are. are. I did a like I used a panini press to grill like a taco shell with a rice tortilla specifically. It was like a pressed taco. So it's kind of like a quesadilla, but you know, no cheese, and it gets super crispy in a very unique, like, wonderful way. Ooh. So, rice. Yeah, tortillas. I love rice tortillas, and they sell those at Trader Joe's. And yeah. they, there's the Food for Life brand sells it at almost any national market. But if you don't have a those like corn tortillas, you can definitely find at any natural mar or yeah. any grocery store. And they're cheap, super cheap. They're cheap. I would say though, most corn tortillas are GMO, mm -hmm. so right. buy organic corn right. whenever you can. If it's not accessible, buy online. And if you find that this is something that you're going to eat a lot of, buy a a bunch, like maybe buy a case of it and you can save money and have it shipped to you all at once and it'll last you for a while. Yeah. So make your own yeah. or <laughs> just check online. In fact, our, our first video from the 12 Days of Vegan Christmas series talks about some of our online stores. And yeah. one of them is Thrive Market, which is a new wholesale store mm -hmm. where you can become a member and get wholesale prices, so like 50% off. Yeah. Um, we also mentioned Ames Market, Vegan Essentials. Like all these stores sell these type of products online, so you don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's what I would I would look into. And anybody else watching, if you have suggestions for a really good brand that meets that criteria, let us know and we can spread the word. Okay, so Diana asked, do we have any suggestions for eco Christmas wrapping? Last year she used old magazines and newspaper. Well, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you use like the comic section or your favorite magazines that you just have lying around, you know, clip out the cute pages and yeah. make wrapping out of them, that's kind of cool. That's what I like to do. Um, yeah. I'm actually going, tomorrow night I'm going to a eco gift wrapping party and that's like a bunch of my eco-minded friends like <laughs> we hang out together and we wrap gifts together and they have all these like they're all very creative so maybe I can update you with some ideas in a few days but I actually did a video with Jason Robel a couple years years ago that's up on his channel but we I think mainly we were talking about wrapping with newspaper and that I'm not sure we got that creative you could also do if you're giving a gift that maybe to a cooking minded person like me or you like if you gave a cute like dish towel yeah you could even like wrap it in the yes. dish towel or yes or you could like a cheap piece of clothes like if you're if that was part of your gift you could even like i don't know <laughs> i love <laughs> you know? that that's that's very true too and you can even get 
something ba they reusable bags and they can they can open it up and then you can take the bag back or gift it to them i mean yeah or, most people are used to throwing things away so it's not weird if you bring it home with you afterwards <laughs> is <right>. it <laughs> And we have so many bags lying around. I mean, you could use yeah. like a, a shopping a paper shopping bag and decorate it. Like yeah. you could yeah. put paint or That'd be fun. markers or if whatever. You have time. Yeah. You just you have to find time to do these things. Yeah. There's so many possibilities. There so, are. You know. And there are a number of companies that make recycled wrapping paper, but mm -hmm. to me it kind of defeats the point. Why not recycle something that you already have in your home versus buying something that's already recycled? But if you want that wrapping paper experience, I know a Whole Foods usually has a little section uh, this time of year, and um, sometimes card shops will have, re you know, recycled wrapping paper. You can definitely buy it online if you have time. Uh, if you have like a store, like a, a any type of like natural minded store, like a co-op or something like that, will probably have that too. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> Kelly asks, can either of you address emotional eating and some tips to consider right before you order that pizza or make some mistake that isn't kind to your body, meaning you're eating really poorly after a breakup, when you're sad, when you're stressed. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're kind of eating for your emotions? Emotional eating. Yeah. You know, I was listening to somebody the other day talk about how – they had all these allergies with food and how it affected them and how the allergies actually manifested in not just stomach problems, but maybe your emotional problems too. And I thought that was so interesting. And I started to kind of like process that. And I was thinking how for me personally, I don't have a high number of allergies, but I feel like sometimes the emotional part of when you're eating can actually interfere with like how you eat. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. instead of like just thinking, oh, I'm angry, or, I'm, I'm sad right now, and I'm going to go eat a big pizza, like to actually stop before every meal and kind of just process your emotional state and try and, I don't know, like, you know how people take a food journal? Yeah, yeah. Like do an emotions journal as to yeah. when you're eating and then how that, that meal makes you feel. Yes. When you... Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm totally just like running my brain right now. Yeah, but, no, I you know, know what you mean? mean. I think keeping track of how we feel physically and emotionally after we eat certain foods is a great practice to get into. Mm -hmm. And and in that sense, if you started really keeping detailed track of that, you could go back when you're feeling stressed out and say, let me look back and see when I ate something that really made me feel good. Right. And then you can choose that instead. Right. Because if you already know right now that pizza doesn't feel good, that should be off your your not to eat yeah. list. However, there are plenty of, gr of healthy pizzas out there. Pizza doesn't have to be unhealthy. And it doesn't even have to be an allergy. Like if she's saying, I'm going to order a pizza now and I know it's going to make me feel bad because I'm going to yeah. eat more. Like maybe you shouldn't order pizza then if you really think that you're going to go to that place yeah. <laughs> and just whatever. Maybe you should just, you know, you can find a smaller, healthier pizza yes. that's not traditional pizza, which let's be honest, you eat too much of traditional pizza and you're going to feel crappy because yeah. it's like white flour and, yeah. you know, sauce. Processed cheese and, and stuff. And then, well, yeah, even if you're doing vegan cheese, it yeah, can, be just, really it can be a little overwhelming. <laughs> but you could go something with um, both Amy's and Trader Joe's. Again, they make mm -hmm. up a, a pizza that is just veggies on top of it. Yeah. It's actually really good. Yeah. And they have gluten-free and, and non-gluten-free versions. And yeah, there's I used so to eat those all the yeah. time. Yeah. And, like, just having onions and, and peppers and things like that on a pizza. Or you could, I mean, if it's pizza that you're craving, just recreate that experience, but something healthy. Yeah. So you're kind of, like, getting best of both worlds. You are you know that maybe you're going towards pizza because it's emotionally comforting to you. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being comforted when we're upset, but find that healthier avenue. Like, get some really high-quality English muffins and make the old-style English muffin pieces. It's almost it's like so she's good. going into it with bad experience. Yeah, <laughs> like right. Or you know, sometimes it's allow yourself to just have that experience, yeah. and and then not feel guilty about it. Because you, yeah, if you feel guilty about it, then you're making yourself feel worse ultimately. Yeah. And if you're already stressed up or stressed or upset, then it's just heightening it. 
Yeah. But I feel like our emotions really do respond to food. So the problem with eating junk food when we're upset is it usually makes us feel so much worse. It's not really helping us. Mm -hmm. But and sometimes that happens. And if you do eat too much pizza when you're feeling stressed out, you have to also then recreate correct it yes. and say, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow I'm have some green day juice. and yeah. tomorrow, yeah, I'll Make a get smoothie. back on whatever horse I was on. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Everybody, we do that all the time. I mean, I know that I, I have those moments and every day is kind of a little balancing act. Yeah. You know, if I have too many of these marshmallows right now, it's like, <laughs> well, I just don't, I choose not to feel bad about it. Yeah. For me, the only time I feel bad after I eat, eat certain foods is if I physically feel bad and then it's kind of like, I just see it as a lesson to yeah, but that's not good because that that's again. like negative feedback. Yeah, I feel like then you're like not going to do that again because I right. feel like crap right now. So I try not to feel guilty about like emotionally. I try not to feel bad when it comes to right. food because that but just that's doesn't so serve hard me. in our society. <laughs> yeah, it's practice, but it's Especially definitely in LA working on. where it's like green juice heaven. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would say just you know take away the guilt do what feels best to you, find some foods that are going to make you feel good because that can really boost your emotional state too. So it's, it's everything is, is benefiting. I did learn once the reason why we are drawn to certain junk foods when we're upset, stressed, whatever it may be. And I don't quote me on this, but I, it was from a good source. And this was a while ago that I read this, but it's because by the way our body works is, when we're eating foods that's really processed, it it's so much work for our body to process and, hmm. and go through. So our body can only focus on one thing at, at a time. Mm -hmm. So if our body is so focused on eating processed foods, it's like all your attention is on that mm -hmm. versus the attention on your head or your emotions, right? So it's kind of like you're, you're distracting yourself hmm. by doing that. Whereas if you were to eat green juice that, or something like that, that your body just processes and is all like, oh, this is easy then it's easier for you to focus on the emotions. Or maybe because it has all those signals like salty, sweet, all that stuff. It's like chemically yeah. making all your brain mm -hmm. the serotonin. almost numbing, yeah. like whatever you're really thinking about. Yes, maybe. exactly, okay. exactly. Because you get in like a, that state of like right. fixation of whatever you're eating. and you The other, the last thing I would say here is numbed. with chocolate, speaking of which, <laughs> there are plenty of great chocolates though. We were though, speaking right? of chocolate? <laughs> no, but I mean, speaking of which, that emotional trigger, right. like okay. that's what chocolate does to our brains, right? right? right it right. sends all this ser serotonin. We feel really good when we eat chocolate yeah. blissed out. Just have some high quality organic fair trade chocolate. Yeah, you have to know what, like, yeah. I'm actually not the chocolate person. Like my husband, chocolate, really done. You, <laughs> I'm, chocolate, yes. done. Me, yep. I'm like Kobe. I like the cinnamon, the... Vanilla, the pumpkin pie. Yeah, the pumpkin yeah. pie. The I'm a vanilla girl. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe that's what triggers it for you. Maybe yeah. chocolate just doesn't do it for you. Yeah, it's strange. But. All right. So let's move on to the next one. That was one. a really long answer. <laughs> it was, but I, I feel like everyone's always interested it's, in that. Thing. Yeah. So this one is from Laura, and she says that she's looking for a purple eyeshadow set that is vegan and cruelty-free, something equivalent to MAC or Mary Kay. Any brands you suggest or know of? Uh, something like this. Yes, I do. I brought them for you to show. Nice. I am really into vegan makeup and always experimenting with them. And purple is one of my favorite colors. Yeah. So my first recommendation would be Pacifica. And Pacifica makes a whole line. They have a purple in this one. This is like a newer palette that they have out. They have great stuff. Um, it's all mineral based. This specific one, the purple is a little too... Light. Um, light for me it doesn't really show up so I have to like really coat it on or like use it with a wet brush yes that's a good yep but my favorite purple and, and it really looks horrible now because I've been using it so much is by this company called Imani and they have this great great purple but it's all smudged mm -hmm. because I seriously use it all the time and it has like tints of pink and gold in it and mm -hmm. it's so pretty like that gives me that satisfying it looks color thick. yeah it's okay. great Ooh, yeah. yeah, it's is it like it's like it's a little wetter. This is like just completely yeah. dry. That like is a like a pastier off. almost, mm -hmm. and that this is a pretty clean. It's it doesn't have any parabens or talc, 
It's made in the USA. It's cruelty free. So I would say check out Imani and Pacifica. I have a number of different uh, brands that I enjoy. And I actually did a video series with Vegan Cuts where we highlighted all the vegan beauty brands that they have. So if you check out the Vegan Cuts YouTube channel, you'll see some videos that I'm in talking about a number of these brands and then you can buy from them. So I'll link to these down below for you to check out. Do you have any others? The, you know, it's such a huge topic finding vegan makeup. The ones that I was trying to gather a list of links of people, of, I was trying to do my research on this at one yeah. point. And the ones that I came up with were Jose Marin. Yeah. Yep, Josie. They have some Josie. Josie yeah. Yes, um, I love their coconut or their argan oil lipstick. I think it's I can't remember if it's coconut water argan oil. <laughs> Her line is <laughs> completely vegan, but right, some they, of them are. Yeah. Right, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then OCC Cosmetics. Oh yeah, obsessive compulsive. Obsessive compulsive with cosmetics. The last, cosmetics. They're completely yeah. vegan. Yep, and they yep. have these little tubes. Um, with really great pigmented colors for like lipstick or you could do actually use some gold on there today. Oh. Um, they have, or you can use eyeshadow even. They have lots of, and there's one more. I don't know. There are a lot of them. Actually. There are a lot. You just have to, I would check out a great resource for this is my friend Sunny who runs the site Vegan Beauty Review. She's amazing. She's a mother. She's about to have another child and about, just like um, balancing everything. And she's got this great website. My Beauty Bunny? Yes. My she's, Beauty Bunny yeah. is really good too. I really she's like too. her work. So there are some really good uh, vegan beauty resources yeah. out there. And um, I'm always happy to share what, what I'm using. I use a number. I, I have so many different brands. For me, it's really important that the brands are eco-friendly and non-toxic as well. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, some of the v brands that are cruelty-free and vegan still use chemicals that I'm not yeah. comfortable with. So. And then some of the super natural ones will use beeswax. Yes. This yes. is what I've noticed. Like yeah. I was buying this one line for a while because it was like super natural yep. and great and then I like realized that bees <laughs> yeah. I was like wait a minute <laughs> well one is so um weird. was a pure 100 percent pure they have beeswax the in their mascara the glass oh I know what you're what talking it? about it's really yes. expensive RMS yeah yeah they're so awesome <laughs> I know so I'm like it's I'm finishing up all the ones and I'm like I don't really want to continue yeah because well, it's a choice. I mean, if it's Tricky. between pro something processed and bad for your body beeswax. versus beeswax, to me, that's a good point. I'd rather use the beeswax, and me it's too. hard to find some specific products that are beeswax free yeah. that don't use a chemical alternative. Yeah. So it we're it's getting better though. Mm -hmm. And one company I've mentioned before that I love is the Detox Market. They have a whole physical store in LA and in Toronto plus an online store and I learned so much from them about beauty and, and they carry a lot of really really great beauty products there so I'll link to them as well and vegan cuts detox market Abe's market as well another one of my favorite stores they uh, sell some beauty products that I buy on there often too so we'll link to that stuff down below all right I have one more oh, there's one called um sorry I just remembered it it's my favorite eyeliner ever it's called Shoot. Well, the, the color is flaxseed. Oh, cool. It's like, I think it might be a New Zealand company. I don't know. I have to look it up. But it's okay. It's so great. It's like my favorite eyeliner. Ooh, ever. I want to know what I that is. It. Yes. The eyeliner I use right now is by Pacifica, and I like it. So yeah. Good. Oh, I'll let you know. <laughs> cool. I, I love hearing. And that's so cool that there are so many brands that we can't even think of them right now. Yeah. So I want to open it up to some questions now. Let's see if we have any. Remember, you can ask your questions on Google+, Plus. so we will not be able to see them if they are on YouTube. So go over to Google+, Plus on either your mobile device or your computer. Find our link, click the play button so you can see us on the screen, and on the right-hand side, there's a little section to ask questions. Let's see if anybody submitted any yet. All right, so... It looks like we're just getting some thank yous here. <laughs> so we have Laura um, thanking us. Thank you for watching, Laura. I, I, you have been so involved recently on Eco Vegan Gal, and I really, really appreciate that. So it's nice to see your name whenever you come up. And Jessica Bell, too, another name I recognize, who said that she has been going strong, gluten-free vegan. Yes, high five. 
Okay. Lisa wants to know <laughs> what what books am I reading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because mm, I'm writing books. <laughs> Not no. reading them. And I'm re I'm watching Netflix <laughs> in my spare time. No, I have. Honestly, well, I want to know what I'm you watch not, on Netflix. Yeah, that's a better question. Um, but have you read any books? Recently? I get so many cookbooks sent to me, and they're all awesome. I've I just got Fork and Beans new cookbook in. I just got um, this other really great smoothie book just in. I forget what it's called. Um, it's all cookbooks. There's so many great vegan cookbooks mm -hmm. out. It's just and we're going to a launch party yeah. tonight that I'm really excited about. Yeah, Christy Turner from Keeping It Kind has her book out. Um, that book looks awesome. How to – oh, this is why I'm not vegan. What is it called? Yeah, I forget. It's, it's, it's got a really about, clever like, name. Every single reason you could ever have for not going vegan, there's a – Dirty argument as to why that's <laughs> why that can be that's awesome. pushed aside because she used to be like a, a dairy cheese expert like she used to live in she lived in Italy for a while I don't know I'm making <laughs> she was like a cheese person and now she's a vegan blogger so that's yeah. so cool yeah I'm excited I, I love seeing all these books come out and there's just so many I yeah. mean I have a massive stack right there. You yeah. can barely see in the background, but like it just gets getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, me too. I read a lot of business books and sometimes yeah. they're not re related to veganism, but I love studying business. Um, and also just like anything I can learn about life and, and just self-improvement and all that stuff. Those are the type of books I like to read. So I balance it out. And Lisa's actually part of my book club. So cool. any of you out there who are interested in reading books, I have this free book club that anyone can join. And together we all read a book. And right now we're reading um, Why We Eat uh, I always mess up the title. Eat pigs, wear cows. Oh, yes. Or no, loved. It's loved. Wait. Loved. I've heard of it. Yes. <laughs> Hmm. So maybe it's love dogs, eat, eat pigs, pigs wear, wear cows. cows. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's, that's that bad. book is. Have you read that, or you just know? I've of it? I've know I know of it. <laughs> I've been meaning to read so it for bad. so long. So it's really cool. And Lisa's Lisa's part of the yeah. book club, which is. Amazing. I I just love movies and television. So, so what much. are you watching and on mm. Netflix? And it's kind of pathetic right now. I just started Scandal. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> I am so addicted to it. I watched like the first episode, like years ago and I was like I don't like this show but then I just started watching more and now I'm kind of it's kind of in Breaking Bad territory right? is it really <laughs> no I mean where I like I need to oh. watch it every night at least one before bed so uh -huh. I can like yes process it well, see I'm the same way I like to watch at least one thing a day I, for me it mentally relaxes me and it yeah. doesn't matter what it me is too. as long as it's entertaining but I don't care if it's like like I <laughs> One show I started watching recently is Jane the Virgin, which is actually quite what, good. What is that on? It's like CW. I don't know. I watch it online, but it's like CW. But the act, the main actress is amazing, and it's really well done show. And it's it got all these great ratings, and it's cool. it's it's just an interesting show. And yeah. so I'm always looking for things on HBO and Showtime and Netflix and yeah. Hulu and whatever it is. If it entertains me and I can turn off my brain for an hour yes. or so. We need I to saw, do that. I saw someone did like a, a picture that said, I have too many tabs open in my brain. <laughs> right? Like, yes. That is exactly how I feel. Yes, yes exactly. So to just kind of like distract yourself from all those tabs. Yeah. That's it. Everybody yeah. can relate to that. Okay. So username, I might botch this. Let's see. Let's. I think this one might be the beginning of the question. There's two questions from... Sophil Silson. <laughs> okay. Sorry if we did we got it wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Who says I've been vegan for only two months? I'm an international student and I live in a university dorm in Toronto. I still live on campus in the Christmas time, but almost all of the food places will be closed because of the Christmas closure. I was wondering what are the kind of vegan foods I can bring with me that will last a week or so? There won't be a kitchen available, and I don't know how to cook anyways. There will be a fridge, though. Where is he going? In Toronto, it sounds like. Where, where does he bring them? I think he's <laughs> – I'm not sure exactly where I he's going. I got a little confused, and I closed the other question already. But somewhere right. in Canada, I'm imagining. Mm -hmm. To me, I mean – Hummus? <laughs> Anything basic you can get anywhere, right? So, yes, hummus, right? Um, 
So he can't cook, but he wants food that will last a week in a in fridge. the fridge. Mm -hmm. Can you cook in advance? Let's find out. Let us know. Can you <laughs> can you cook in advance and keep? Or he says he doesn't really know how to cook anyway. Okay. So you could make also peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You yes. Could buy some chips. almond butter. Yep, buy some butter. hummus. Buy some a nice loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. um, and tons of vegetables and fruit and nuts and yeah. seeds and just kind of have your little haul. Yeah. And you can make so much stuff from all those things I just said. Yeah. I mean, you can make salads, <laughs> sandwiches. veggie sticks. Um, you can make, yeah, a chopped veggie salad. Um, yeah. Beans. Get some, some of the boxed beans instead of the canned so you can mm -hmm. even just like Cut them open. Yeah, yeah cut that's a good open. thing. Yeah, now now be cooked beans will come in boxes like at a number of stores. Yeah, boxes, those are great. That's a good point because then they're easy to cut. I never yeah. thought of it that way. Then you can mix them together in a variety of things. Some lemons. Lemons are great for the beans or the veggies. Um, if you like tahini is really great too. Maple mm -hmm. syrup for you can make a salad dressing just out of that. Lemon yep. and all that stuff. Salt and pepper, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're good to go. Yeah. Like, you could make so many different Vegan things. Vegan is easy. <laughs> yeah, you just need a ton of You just of need food. a little creativity in your brain and just think about what foods you like and mm -hmm. then make recipes from the foods that you like. Yeah, exactly. And base, basic stuff. I mean, if, yeah. if you got the nut butter, you could yeah. do, put that on celery. You could put that on a sandwich. You can put that on an apple. Yeah. Uh, if you got nuts and seeds, you can mix those together to trail mixes. You could even make desserts if you wanted to get creative Hummus, with that. you can make into pitas. You could put it into wraps. You can make it as a salad dressing. Mm -hmm. You could put it into basically anything, a sandwich. Yep, crackers. My friends always make fun of me. My non-vegan friends, because I always have the hummus. Whenever we have like big parties with them, I'm like, did you get me the hummus? <laughs> <laughs> like, Kathy, did your hummus? Like, oh, well, hummus is so filling. It's so great. Yeah, you can like, yeah. So great. Yep. And then you, <laughs> when you put in different spices and herbs in it, you can get a few different types of hummus too. You can get garlic yeah. hummus. You can get. Or you what can are do, your favorite like, hummus? You could make traditional garbanzo bean hummus with like tahini and lemon, or you could get white beans and make a white bean hummus. You could use edamame, make an edamame hummus. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if he wants to make it. Lentils, though. you can make a let. Oh, right. Well, yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> the stuff that you can just combine together. Right. Yeah, without a blender or yeah. a mixing bowl or anything. I think if you have just a bowl and a plate, <laughs> you make salads and sandwiches. Yeah. And, and you you're can good get to go. some dried fruit because that's really good to adding to salads, like dried cranberries or even dates. Chop mm -hmm. them up and they'll add that like sweetness. Yeah. And then add a nut, like pecans or walnuts or pumpkin seeds are my favorite for your salads, hemp seeds, mm -hmm. to give it different flavors. And if you want to bring a cutting board and a knife, I mean, you can look up a lot of raw food recipes that won't require cooking anything. And yeah. all you really need is a bowl, a plate, a knife, and a cutting board. Yeah. And you can chop and things up. And one good grocery shopping trip. Yep. Produce section. Yep, exactly. <laughs> the dried food, like the... Bulk section. Bulk section. Mm -hmm. And then get some some beans in the, in the boxes. Yeah. And you're good to go. Yeah. Even crackers, too, if you don't have, like, a toaster and you don't want, like, soft bread. Yeah, exactly. Like those, like, crisp bread, like the rice yep. rice crisps, mm -hmm. those big ones. Yep. What they're called. Make some sandwich. And the pita bread can doesn't have to be heated up or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Or tortilla. I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he, many options. He followed up. He said, I am still new to being vegan, and because I don't know how to cook, I can always use the new ideas. Ideas. Thanks again. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And also remember, you can go to non-vegan restaurants and get brown rice made for you, and you can take it home, and then you can put some of these ingredients on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, you can even get brown rice at a number yeah. of stores that's already cooked, yeah. and like you can just open it up, and it's it's not going to be hot, but it's still cooked already, and you can add things into it. Yeah, Trader Joe's has those frozen rice yep. packs too. Yeah, really easy. Yeah, it's nice to have things like that. Um, or, you know, if you do have access to, like, um, I, I don't usually recommend the microwave, but you could get a soup and microwave that in a bowl or something if mm -hmm. need be. There's a lot of instant soups out there. You just add hot water. Like Don, uh, John McDougall's has a whole line of vegan soups that are healthy. Yeah. You just need some hot water, which you could you could get at a coffee shop. You know, just get a, <laughs> seriously, just ask for some hot water and pour it in and you're yep. good to go. Yep. 
college dorm it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get the, the box of vegan mac and cheese. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. Lisa said, followed up. She said, I've started my vegan cookbook pile in my room. I found that my family likes the food with Indian spices the best. Do you have a Indian inspired or an Indian vegan cookbook that you know of? Oh, uh, vegan Rika. Doesn't she have, does she have a book? I or don't does know. she just have her amazing blog with lots of vegan Rika .com. Is vegan, that what it is? Is it Rika or Richa? <laughs> R-I-C-A, so right? Yeah. R-I-C-H-A. H-A. She has some great recipes. She's on my name vegan. Okay. Um, but I know, doesn't PCRM have some Indian? Probably. And Forks I Over Knives they, does too. Cause, yeah. um, they somebody, had a Kickstart app, I think. And P PCRM did? I think they did. Oh. Hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure there's uh, – Indian res recipes are so easy to make <sighs> vegan. Yeah. So maybe people just don't think there needs to be a whole book on there's them. There's actually an Indian um, tag on Finding Vegan. There you there go. You go. <laughs> FindingVegan.com. <laughs> just go to the – if you don't can't find one on the front page, just click any of the tags at the bottom, like you know, entree or whatever, and then change entree to in Indian in your browser web bar, and then oh, okay. they'll all pop up because I tag them because we get a lot of them. Oh, and I know that it's a specific there's a specific audience for people who want yep Indian food, so yes. I've made that tag and yeah, online is is an abundance, but if you like yeah. the actual book. Maybe some someone else watching out there will know of one. Yeah, but I, I Amazon too. Type in vegan Indian. I bet there's a book or two that we've never. Yeah, there there are tons. Realized that was out there. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Zoe asked, any suggestions for gluten free meat substitutes? I know Whitney is following gluten free and soy free. Do you avoid seitan and tofu? Is it okay if I eat seitan and go gluten free for everything else? Is seitan bad for us? So, um, <laughs> can I get a gift of that? <laughs> that would be a good t-shirt. No, really um, I think so. It's done. funny because some people think it's, it's like Satan. Right. Like, no, but, I know. So for anyone else who doesn't know, which is a common question, Satan is a, a wheat meat. And so far, nobody successfully made one that is gluten-free. But there are some gluten-free and soy-free meat alternatives. I personally just love vegetables like the vegetables are the main component of my diet um and fruits nuts and seeds um i, I occasionally will eat tempeh that's probably one of my favorite meat alternatives but i do have trouble digesting soy um and then there's beyond meat they have a gluten-free and soy-free meat product um there are a number of gluten-free brands the soy-free is a little bit more challenging one of my friends um ruby ruby Forget her website name. I am Ruby or something. But she recently told me about hemp tofu. Yes. Oh Have yeah. Have you tried it? Oh, I bought it. Yes. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, it's I in my love fridge. it. Living Harvest makes a hemp tofu that is nice. really good. Okay. I guess I don't think of that in the same category. Like I guess it is. Yeah, meat alternative, but it's very very soft. Mm -hmm. It tastes great. Like for a scramble. Tofu yeah, scramble. but it won't. It, it like it doesn't cube up like right. firm tofu does. Right. It's like the soft tofu. But yes, that is awesome. Gluten and soy free. It's just it's made from hemp seeds. My favorite thing is lentils. I'm yeah. a huge lentils fan. Lentils are just a nutrition powerhouse for mm -hmm. vegans and especially women because they're super rich in iron. They're super rich in you know vitamins and fiber and um, B vitamins. They're just and of course protein. Yeah, you have just massive amounts of protein for a legume. That yeah, you and they taste so great. Expect. They're making lentil pastas so yeah. now. They um, there's so many different varieties too. Yeah. You can get the red ones. I love the French black yeah. lentils because they're very very firm. Yeah. So I actually like saute them in a skillet, so they get kind of crispy and they almost like pop. And my husband hates beans and anything mushy, but he will devour these. We just wow. had them last night, and That's I have a recipe good. on my website for them. Um, skillet popped lentils, but I love Ooh, lentils. That's a, I like that description. I could just eat them every day because they're just perfect. <laughs> they really are. They really are. And and you can make lentil loaves, which are really yeah. nice. It's a great yes. meat alternative. Yeah. Um, th I mean, for me, it's like the nut seeds, legumes, vegetables. I, I don't need. I don't need the processed stuff, and I'll yeah. have it as a as like a treat if I want it. Yeah. Like I'll have 
you know, or ease for ease. Like yeah, you just pop it in the oven and it's ready. And even minutes. then, though, I just I don't never I, I never buy it. It's really like if it's at a restaurant or it's at somebody's house or something. But yeah. I think that's a, the one of the best things I've learned is to simplify. Focus on whole foods and you your palate changes because I used to love yeah. all the processed vegan foods. I yeah. mean, I ate it all and always had frozen foods around and stuff in my fridge that was pre-made. I have to say your video of your like food journey, you know that one that's like gets a million views. Oh, the, the weight <laughs> loss journey one? Yeah. yeah. Like you have all these video clips of like your <laughs> archival like footage of you like eating like that's amazing. <laughs> like how do you have all those? <laughs> Well, because I've been so, filming myself since I was a little so, kid. That's so yeah. cool to see this like life of someone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me video. too. Even watching some of my older videos, I've changed so much. So it's, YouTube is great for that. You can yeah. You can really look back and how yeah. much you evolved. Yeah, I would love to have videos <laughs> of me eating like you <laughs> know five stuff. years yeah. ago. Just see how it's changed. Yeah. It's so funny. But everybody does have their journey. Like if you're looking for meat substitutes now. You might just you might slowly you might be enjoy more them. Like us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen. There's nothing if, if it, you feel good about it. Like we, the last part of Zoe's question was, "Is seitan bad for us?" Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to love seitan, and yeah. there's this one company in LA. If you had, they're like called like Vegan Kitchen or something. They're in this plastic pack, and you can get them at the Santa Monica Co-op, and mm -hmm. and they make this grilled marinated seitan and I used to eat that like it was going out of style like I would just heat it up yeah. and just oh my god it's so good it was or so like at good. native foods when they have their the tempeh reuben is seitan oh, yeah the like amazing tempeh reuben at native foods <laughs> I mean I love that I will yeah. eat it I oh. I don't have gluten issues so I do eat it but it's not bad for you everything in moderation I know that's an annoying answer but it's true <laughs> Yeah, it depends if, on if, how your body reacts to it, and also what where is it coming from? Is it is a high quality flour that they're using? I mean, if they're yeah. using like GMO processed it's hard flour, to like that. yeah. So, but you can make it yourself really easily. In fact, it's so easy to the make. vegan zombie has, I, I believe, they have a video about how to make seitan. But they did a demo when we were on the cruise together, and I was like, that's all. Like it's it was so, so easy. fast to make. Yeah. So I would recommend making things like that yourself, and that way you can control the whole experience. Or at least make it once, so then you can really understand what's what in eating. it. Like it's literally just vital wheat gluten. Yep. The pow it's like a powder. You mix it with water, and it becomes this crazy, like, binded, chewy substance. It's so interesting. And then you put it in like, like boiling water. It. Yeah. Yeah, and it gets like fluffy, and it's like. Yeah, I think you just boil it, and then you grill it. It's very it, much right? like bread because yeah. it becomes like chewy. Mm. Yeah, they're you're getting okay, so yeah. hungry. <laughs> okay. But no, it's not bad for you. So Jessica, thank you. She pulled up a book called Vegan Indian yes. Cooking, 140 Simple and Healthy Vegan I Recipes. Yes. By someone that I've heard. <laughs> someone we've heard of before. All right. So Laura just asked, I thought about doing a juice detox. Any thoughts about how many times a year that a healthy person should do this? And how about how many days? Laura? I've got a video that I just filmed yesterday coming up on this very topic. I just finished a three-day juice cleanse and did a review of this company. So stay tuned on the Eco Vegan Gal channel. What company? <laughs> it's called Urban Remedy. And I Why did. Does that sound familiar? They're based um, in Northern California and they, they make a cold pressed organic juice that you can order and have shipped to you. Okay. So there's a number of things. So I talk about that brand and then I also give tips for doing a juice cleanse, why or why not to do one. I kind of cover the whole topic mm -hmm. in that video. Yeah. So that should be out sometime next week. So I'll, I'll let that video speak for it for that question. Okay. okay, Kelly asked, I'd love to hear more about Kathy and what is she offering on her website? <laughs> what is she all about for those of us who don't know her well? Oh, good well, point. Well, we talked about this, this probably, a little in the beginning, but yeah. why don't you expand upon it? So, Let me close the door. I'll be right back. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody who doesn't know me, I have a vegan recipes website, healthyhappylife.com. It started as lunchboxbunch.com, which was my healthy children's brand that I created about seven years ago. And it kind of morphed. Oh, puppy. Baby, come on. Come, come on. on. Come on, honey. Come on. Evie wants kind to be part of the morphed into a blog. Nice. And I I just share 
photography, vegan recipes, wellness tips. Um, I have a degree in health and wellness. That's where my passion has always lied. Um, and I've come a long way in my life to try and find a healthy way to eat that kind of respects my own body and also the animals that I've loved since I was a little girl and never felt right eating meat. So I've been a vegetarian since I was like a teenager just by nature um, and it morphed into veganism. So I share that on my blog and I tweet about it. I'm all over social. I do this full time and I also have my two cookbooks this one, which if you're late to the game, <laughs> <laughs> and then Healthy Happy Vegan Kitchen, which is out in April. I will be talking about that more on my blog in January. And then I also do FindingVegan.com, which is like if you're familiar with taste spotting or Food Gawker, those great um, blog aggregate websites. It's kind of like that, only it's all vegan recipes and it's super cool. So it's very cool. That's what I offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's amazing. I love your website. The Healthy Happy Life is, is such a Thank fun, you. beautiful website to be on. So all of you are really going to enjoy it if you're, if you're brand new to our work. Okay. So let's Ooh. see what else. We'll start to wrap it up. And um, so Kelly was... <laughs> You're stinky. Um, <laughs> Kelly was following it up by uh, making the um, emotional food journal, but just to simply remove the guilt, even if she doesn't eat it perfectly. She also asked, what are our favorite vegan lunches? I don't lunches? like that, perfectly. What? There's no, no such thing as perfect. <laughs> I, yeah. Like the way that you think that you should eat. If you don't eat it perfectly, Hmm. How did you analyze that? Well, I just I always go to the progress, not perfection mentality of, yeah. of just doing the best I can with what I know right now and how I feel about it and, and taking away that stress because any any stress that we create makes us can drive us crazy and it can really affect our health too. So whatever I can do to be less stressed is very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. And I think trying to be perfect is very, very stressful. <laughs> I think it's built up into whatever your mindset is at the current time. Like, yeah. if you're super relaxed and you're on vacation and you're just laying out, like, on a lounge chair on a beach and you order a plate of fries, I bet you a million dollars you're going to say, I could care less if I eat this entire yeah, plate right exactly. now. Exactly. I am, like, so calm and, you know, I'm in paradise and I've totally been in that mindset where it's like, I don't care. I'm just going to. Yeah. So perfect is a different different definition when you're in a different state of mind, I think. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Kelly <laughs> Kelly also asked, what are our favorite vegan lunches? And what about when you're cooking di dinner for your significant others? So you have a husband. So what are some of your favorite meals to make for him and with him? Um, sometimes I think of him as a little child <laughs> because he does not like beans. And it took me like... <laughs> three years from to like rice, not even kidding. It's tricky, but he wasn't even vegan when I first married him. He was complete healthy. He didn't like dairy, but he ate meat once in a while. And now he's like totally vegan and he only orders fish once in a while when we're at a restaurant. But at home, we're like completely 100% all the time vegan. And so he likes salads, he likes stews. I don't know. <laughs> Everything Your on lentils. my on my website, the stuff you see, that's what we're eating basically. But for lunch, I love a smoothie for lunch. I think it's super easy. I'll add a nice protein powder to kind of give it a little bit more oomph there. Um, I'm not a sit down and long lunch girl. Are you? No, no. I'm. So we're I'm, not in Italy. <laughs> I, Unfortunately. I have very odd eating. I pretty much eat when I'm hungry. So it's yeah. whatever the and what happens. Yeah. So I work, you know, I, I eat a lot. I try to I try to step away from my computer when I eat. Yes. And because yes. I'm almost always at my computer yeah, unless I'm not sure. at an event or something. So for me it's like that's oftentimes when I'll watch something on TV is like that's like I step back, I relax. Yeah. It's relaxing for me to just sit there and and turn off my brain and enjoy the food and yeah. enjoy, you know, the moment yeah. or whatever. So important. I know that sounds like, I, I think that it's important to be mindful, 
But for me, if I'm sitting, watch that, I guess that's why it's different for me. Like watching a TV show or something is mindful in a way because if I were eating while I was sitting in front of my computer working, I wouldn't be eating mindfully. I would just be like working, working. Eating, yeah, taking no, I can't that. do that. So I have to step away. And I usually, I just like to be doing something. Um, but I also just love eating with other people. I mean, that yeah. to me is, is really wonderful. But we are lucky. We have this, I mean, there's pros and cons of working from home. You have a more flexible schedule, but it can be isolating, which is mm -hmm. why eating with mm -hmm. people is nice. But if you do go do a desk job and you have a set lunch hour and maybe you are eating at your desk because that's where people eat when they are in an office. I mean, yeah. <laughs> unless they actually go to the lunch break room. Which yeah. I don't think a lot of people do. <laughs> but go outside. You know, there, there are some great things. I used to bring to work um, – the hummus again, <laughs> you know, hummus spiral wraps. Um, I would get little pasta dishes from leftovers from the night before that I would just go and pop in the microwave. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would for ease. I would get kind of like wraps mm -hmm. that you can stick in the fridge, like a tempeh wrap. It's yep. so great in the fridge, a smoky tempeh wrap with like mm -hmm. avocado. And then you just wrap it up and cold. It's good. So you don't have to heat it up. And then some carrot sticks on the side. I loved um, to like crunch, to, like if you have any stress and aggression during the day, <laughs> to have those carrot sticks at lunch is great. Um, I'm really into soups right now. Soups like are great. I, and I'm obsessed with my pressure cooker. So I make <laughs> soups in 10 minutes that are phenomenal or chilies. Yeah. And, and it's really like, what I love about soups Comfort. is it's just like veggie broth and vegetables. Like you don't even have to think about it. You can just chop up some things, put it in there and almost always comes out perfectly. So three of my secret ingredients for soups to make them taste good are bay, add a bay leaf because mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will give it a like restaurant flavor. That's just that weird undertone of deliciousness. Um, nutritional yeast. Yep. If you're into yep. that, um, add some thickness and also adds that cheesy savory flavor, which is so great. Yes. And then if you're not gluten free, and you're okay with eating <laughs> fake meat once in a while, I add a field roast spicy chipotle. I just chop up one of those sausages, <gasps> and literally it so just good. adds so much flavor. Oh, yeah. Spiciness and flavor, and you don't even have to eat all of the, like, the sausage in it at one time. It just it's, adds it's so much flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. I think also having just a lot of spices. Like I yeah. love chipotle. Turmeric. Or, yeah, turmeric. <laughs> Curry powder. Garlic powder, onion powder, you know, just so many, so many different smoky paprika. Things. Yes. But... Or even um uh liquid smoke I put yes. into my soup sometimes. That's good. really good For too. A pea soup. It's really and it's good. that's the thing. I I think that something like a soup that you can make really easily, make a big batch of it is great. And you can take that to lunch. You can eat, eat mm -hmm. it cold. You can heat it up. Yeah. There's so many different things. And it's like better the next few days. Yeah. Oh yeah. It really it gets better and better. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so let's ask, answer this last question. Oh, an avocado toast. Always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always oh, saves the day. Do you so need something satisfying quick? with the salt and, and the nutritional yeah. yeast on it? Yeah. Oh, man. It is just magical. Okay. Let's answer this last question, then we'll wrap things up. Okay. And Kelly will be one more from you, which is what are some vegan websites that we both love? What are your go tos? I hate this question because there's so many. <laughs> and like, I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, some great vegan websites. Well, our websites are great <laughs> <laughs> to begin with. Finding Vegan is great. Um, oh, she glows is yeah. awesome. She's amazing. Angela is just stellar. My friend Jenna Choosing Raw is just brilliant. And her writing yes. is just ugh, Unbelievable. amazing. Like yes. I used to think I was a good writer. <laughs> and every time I read Jenna's posts, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> She's so much better than me. But Aww, she's so no. she's such a great writer. Just different. Yes. Um, yes. She's an amazing person. Yeah, her vocabulary is just psychotic. <laughs> it's it's great. Um, Christy, keeping it kind. We're going to her book party later. She's great. Mm -hmm. Vegan Rika, vegan Miam. Mm -hmm. Mayam. I don't even mm -hmm. know how to pronounce it. I'm yep. horrible. Um, Love her work. Obviously, Issa's Post Empire. Punk, yeah, Post Punk Kitchen. <laughs> Post Punk yeah. Kitchen. Um I hate this because you know you're going to freak out. Well, yeah, there's so many out there. So I mean, 
I also love chocolate covered Katie. Oh yeah, she's got. I actually don't very go creative. fork and beans. Those yes, creative people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I just met the the people behind Thug Kitchen last night for oh, the first time, which was really cool. Cool. And they're doing awesome. a cooking class coming up in Los Angeles that I'm going to. I'm really excited. There, there really are so many sites so out there. Many. I'm going. Are you going to Vita Vegan Con? Did we talk about this? I am. I think I'm doing a booth. At, That's right. The Finding right. Vegan app. I yes. think I'm going to be at the Friday night booth thing. Well, I would say so. And then I'm going to go. Yeah, I haven't. You have secured I really that, hope but I that think you go. I'm, going. <laughs> I'm speaking there about YouTube. I'm excited. It's a vegan bloggers conference. So. I would definitely advise anyone who is a blogger or wants to start a blog and wants to learn more about it to go. But even if you're not going, paying attention to what happens at Vita Vegan Con is really cool. So you can go on their website now and see the speakers and the, all of them have been running blogs and websites for a long time. So lots of great people, pretty much all the established bloggers are, are there or are speaking there. Yeah. And they also have an RSS feed that you can download and it has all of their blogs. I think they're having 300 and I think if I heard them right, it's 350 people will be going. This year. Is that, yeah. I don't think it's, has it been that many? I think it's been around 250 or 300 mm -hmm. before. So this year's bigger and that's incredible. And it's in a cool, really, it's in a different place. Like, I mean, yeah. What was it in Portland? Yep. It was which in is Portland. Awesome. Yep. But it's in another Now it's cool in place. Austin. And uh, that's just, I would definitely recommend all of you blog, if you're blogging or if you're just looking for bloggers, check out Vita Vegan Con because it's like all of the, the vegan bloggers that are really into it are there and just listed on there, tweeting about it, yeah. Facebook, you know, all that stuff, Instagramming. I would definitely check that out. Yeah. Okay. Should we answer one last question or sure. should we wrap it up? Okay. We'll sneak, we got one last one snuck in and this is it. Cutting you guys off. Um, I, I have no idea how to pronounce your name because it's in another language, yes. but it's a great question. Yes. How do you deal with narrow minded people that are judgmental towards your vegan personal choices? Although I am confident in my lifestyle, I find it difficult to talk about it with someone prejudiced who's not willing to listen. So I've answered this several times. I'm going to turn this over to you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I think you have to find that inner confidence, first of all. I think if this is your lifestyle and you believe in it with your heart and your soul and your mind and you're really doing it every day, you have to first find that confidence because it took me a couple years to really be able to say in a huge group of people who are not vegan at a party, say, yeah, I'm vegan and say it like, you know, I'm not whispering it or I'm ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know there's going to be people that judge it. There's people that judge all sorts of things about you every day. But this is something, first of all, find that confidence, I think, is just. A hundred percent. And that's your own journey. I can't give you advice for it. Mm -hmm. um, but when you are faced with people who just don't listen, I think, gosh, I watched... I watched a video with you and Colleen, and I think yeah. there was a really great tip to when they start saying, oh, I tried vegan for a week, and I, it failed. It was horrible. Then you say, oh, what, well, how did it fail? What, you know, what happened? Why mm -hmm. do you think it? Ask them questions. Yes. I love Figure that. out what they know, and normally they're going to talk themselves into a wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. I think so. that that is probably with some of the best advice. The, the interview I did with Colleen Patrick, Goudreau and any of Colleen's work is really a phenomenal resource oh, for this. I had never seen that one talk. Oh, it's the one in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> she's so good. She's, she's an amazing speaker and she gives great advice. And a lot of her advice is built around, you know, how to handle these social situations. She's written books about it and she has a podcast. So I really think to further, you know, your knowledge and, and your comfort level there, she is probably the best resource that I know of right now. Um, and I, I agree, though. I think that it really does come down to that confidence level and, and asking people questions and not being, not coming across or not feeling judgmental or prejudiced yourself. Because you can really only be responsible for yourself. That's all you have control over. Yeah. And so if other people feel that, your inner confidence should be strong enough to, to you know, blockade them from, from getting into you. And if it's not yet, work towards that because it's an ongoing thing and I've been working on that for years and years and it, it takes time. And I, I think at some point you are going to feel really 
bad when people are mean to you. And I think it's good to have someone in person and also online, both of those things that you can talk to. Because if you don't have that community of other people who are like you, you're going to feel isolated. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you're probably going to fail. <laughs> like, yeah. if you feel super isolated and horrible about it, being miserable is not any way to live. Right. So find, seek out a community. I think it's great to have online communities, but it's also great to have people in person that you can talk to about. Yeah, um, absolutely. Your vegan life and feeling yeah. crappy. <laughs> and they're out there. I mean, vegans are everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. I mean, it's just a matter of finding them, going to meetup groups. I always encourage that. And start with online. I mean, you can build relationships and, and then you might end up hanging out with somebody in person. So you never know. Yeah, and don't, don't let those people get to you. <laughs> they're... I mean, veganism is super. We're helping the animals. We're helping the planet. We're helping ourselves. And we're just aware of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I... And we like to give people free food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did That's a post. Why, te why vegans are not annoying with my post. <laughs> Ten reasons vegans are not annoying. And one of them was... We will bring you food so yeah. you can try our vegan deliciousness. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, she brought me marshmallows today. How and awesome yeah, I got that? like hater <laughs> comments on that post, but I just really, I, well, I got more positive than yeah. negative, but there's always going to be haters. So you just have to, you have to build up that shell and be confident in yourself and yeah, not listen to them. What do they say? What, when people say negative things, it's probably more about them than it is about you. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's so true. And yeah. you know, we also have to be respectful of, of other people's choices. If they're not vegan, it's not a matter of forcing it onto them. Right. If, but we also ho have to hope that they're respectful of us. And just because someone's disrespectful of you doesn't mean that you should be disrespectful back. Right. So cultivating that compassion and that inner confidence is really, to me, what carries you through those situations. Yes. All right, that was a great part to, to wrap things up on. Thank you for being here. This yeah. is so great. This is fun. I cannot wait to just continue with this 12 days of being Christmas. <gasps> yes. so it was so much fun. And if you guys have not entered, I highly suggest that you oh pop on gosh. over to It'd be crazy not to enter. That. <laughs> I mean, if I, I if I could, I would because I yeah. want everything. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do win, win, please send us a video yes. <laughs> of when you find out that yes. you won or when you get your prizes. Yes, I know. And we'll we will post it on our website. We will. We will. <laughs> I know. That, that would be so magical. And I think other people would want to see that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you can check out all the details about everything we talked about today in the description field, all the links to things that we've talked about, the link to the giveaway, all these products and books and websites and all that. And that is courtesy of the amazing Rachel who helps me out with all this. She will get that information out and I'll put it up. <laughs> we've got the book too, yes. <laughs> Um, those links will be up there within 48 hours of this recording. So ch come back around if you're watching live or watching the recording before then, and you'll find it there. And you'll be back on the channel anyways watching the 12 Days of Christmas series, I hope. We have 11 more videos mm -hmm. you guys are going to see in the, the next 11 days. Yep. So her, she's got her YouTube channel and all the others um, mentioned. All of those linked are down below. So definitely check out Kathy. Keep in touch with her. She's doing amazing work. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Whitney show. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks to everyone else for watching. It's really so cool connecting with people live, isn't it? Yeah. I it's mean, fun. it's it's really neat and getting On to know people's names. On a Saturday. I know. <laughs> That's where all the cool people I are. I know. It's, it's so neat. And just shows, you know, people want that community. So it's kind of this virtual community here. Yeah. And who knows, maybe you guys will become friends with one another. So comment on each other's posts and stay in touch. Check out each other's websites and social media. I mean, that's a really great way to build friends, too. Yeah, I really encourage absolutely. that community feeling through everything yeah. that I do. Yeah. Especially, like, I'm finding vegan. You have such a great community there. Yeah. So don't be shy. Just, you know, connect with other people, and that really, really help you with your, your vegan journey as well. Yeah. All right, we're wrapping things up. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you next Saturday. I have got... Brian from The Sexy Vegan. He is my Ooh. guest next week. So, so that's going to be fun. He's cute. <laughs> he's him. hilarious. He's he's witty. I mean, he's he's a really cool he's guy. He's super sexy. Yes, he's very <laughs> sexy. He's and really married fun. with a son. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Which makes him even sexier. Uh, I'm very excited to have him on. I've got a great list of people coming up.
I mean, not as cool as you, but <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> oh, please. Okay. Until then. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend.